some of these are okay would you rather go back in time as a baby but have all the knowledge that you have now or know everything that's going to happen from this point onwards am i a baby now or am i a baby when i was a baby it you go back in time i think be a baby when i was a baby with the knowledge i have now the only thing baby is, good. we spoke about this before like do i am i am i aware of my of myself being a baby as uh, is 30 year old johnny a baby yeah so i like have to experience all of the like futile things that a baby has to go through not necessarily because it because if it, like let's say suddenly it happens now you are two months old you're being held in your dad's hands like like that and you go dad and he goes whoa right go long s and p <laughs> times leverage <laughs> and just hold i promise yeah, you, you okay so, so let's say you do that right there's a few things a few problems like one march 2008 sell so, yeah we'll get in touch with um mark baum mark baum and the founder of scion capital the guys who shorted the housing market uh and go give them, give them i'm all in he created structured products with banks to short the housing market so I feel like putting your money in that fund is probably the smartest thing to do. Yeah. Have Deutsche Bank laugh at you, but then just be like, it's all right. Don't worry. What's he called? Michael. It doesn't matter. The, the other problem though, is that you don't want to be revealing yourself as a miracle baby that can tell the future. Exactly. So exactly, exactly that. So how do you communicate to people that you're trustworthy? Because I think as soon as it, someone gets wind of the fact that you are a baby from the future, you don't need to just Kelly criterion. So the Kelly criterion is for anyone listening, it is your, basically your track record. It's a ratio or it's a, it's a constant that is your trading performance over time. So your win rate and your, the size of your wins and losses. So if you can just demonstrate, I've got an excellent portfolio track record, low drawdown, high win rate, put your cash in my pot. But you're a two month old baby. So then you'd have to get a brokerage account, which brokers support two month year old baby. So I think we've spoken about this before. And I think I said that it all comes down to the fact that you can't have, you don't have a bank account. You don't have a driver's license. Like you're waiting 17 years before you have any real like clout or freedom. So like what employment could you gain? Probably nothing. You're limited by the, like the liquidity of a baby basically the infrastructure and the liquidity that a baby has access to. So you can't, um, you can't capitalize on any of these things financially because you, you don't have access to, unless you have a, a means of getting it. Well, uh, you, you know, you could ask like, Oh, um, find an 18 year old and say, excuse me, can I just use your bank account? But then they have the fight, you know, if you made them, lo- made, made them loads of cash and then mm-hmm. you go and then they, they just go and spend it and you go, Hey, hang on. That was, that was my cash. No one's going to believe you. So that comes back to the argument that it's better to just know the future now. If there's still opportunity coming, if COVID's going to kill us all, then yeah, there's a problem. I think there's things that I feel like both of us would have done differently sooner or whatever if we could start again, knowing what we know now. The difficulty is like wait, the amount of time you have to wait so if I think of like, what would I do differently? That starts probably when I'm like 18. So really? years of like, between the age of one and 17, you're just having to go. All of the like, the coloring in, the Pritt stick bullshit, like all that, and then leading into like learning the times tables. That's GCSEs, yeah. A-level. Yeah, all of that. And like, you can't at any point say like, look guys, like I've got a degree, I've got all these professional qualifications, <laughs> like, I've got to go start this business that I'm due to start in this many years. I'd like to just start it now, to be honest. Cause like, guys, I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I appreciate GCSEs are important, but I'm over it. I've got an MA. I'm a doctor. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about starting this social media platform. Cause I hear that's going to be a big thing in a couple of years time. They're like, okay, of course you're a baby from the future. Uh, yeah. But if you crack it, I suppose you've got a lot of time to think about it. Like imagine if imagine if you and I just sat and thought about this thing and how to overcome this thing for a month. Like you'd probably come up with a solution, wouldn't you, or a strategy? And you're a two month old baby, you've got ages to strategize and plot and plan. So, 
you just got to plot and plan with a dummy in your mouth and pretending that you're not plotting. So can you read? Can you, can you like read and write? You can, but you're a baby. I suppose you've got to say that like you're the body of the baby. So you can't like pull 300. So you're lacking physical attributes, but you have all of the mental attributes of a 30 year old. So like I would just meditate for months. Nothing else to do is there. Well, like if, if you're, if you're two months old, think of that existence pretty basic in terms of like what's expected of you. So while everyone thinks you're napping, just get like four or five hours a day of meditation. in, <laughs> And then by the time you're like 10, then start lifting. You'll just be enlightened. You'll be enlightened and coming up to huge stock market crashes, like huge, like the tech bubble, like there's so many things that you would be able to just float through as a like Buddha-esque 10 year old. So, so you know what that is then? That's just periodizing your life, isn't it? Just bulking the meditation in between two months old and 10. <laughs> Think of the advantage you'd had of, you'd have an advantage over everyone else your age by like, oh. It's a big regret. I, w- I wish I'd done that between two months and 10 rather than all the, the crap I did when I was two months old. I suppose the trouble is like, does it affect your development? Well, not anymore because you're already 30. Because you're 30. So you'd be 60, but 30. Wow. What, what a life to live. What a conversation. So today, on that <laughs> note. <laughs> yeah, leading on from that. <laughs> we were going to answer the question of, should I start a podcast? Very common question that we get from a lot of people who know us and um, propane business clients. And I think the answer is not really a clear yes or no, hence needing this episode. Hence the question, question. yeah. So I think the answer for most people is no. (laughs) Why is that? So I would say that people place too much emphasis on content trying trying to use content as being the way that people find out about them so we have shifted over the past i mean i think we've been doing it subconsciously for quite a long time but only really very recently is there a large emphasis for us on like content is a conversion tool rather than a tool to expand your reach so everyone sees influencers online or people with huge podcasts like joe rogan and thinks wow joe rogan's just like given exclusive access to Spotify for this huge sum of money. Therefore I need a big podcast. But like as a coach, I think podcast, the the best role a podcast serves is like someone finds out about you through your main paid marketing mechanism, decides not to work with you or is thinking about working with you, comes across something like a podcast, gets to, is exposed to you as a coach, exposed to like your personality, maybe some interviews you've done or whatever. And it's like, right, yeah, I'm in, sold. But trying to like, because I mean, I don't know how many podcasts have started on a weekly basis. It must be a lot. Yeah, especially nowadays, like everyone's starting a podcast. Like I saw a tweet the other day saying like, if you're a 32 year old male, please, for the sake of the world, do not start a podcast. (laughs) So that, yeah, I think like everyone thinks uh, the reason I'm not, my, my, my customer base isn't large enough is because I don't have a big podcast or I don't know. And you could apply that statement to loads of things, right? Loads of like online assets that people have. Um, so I would say yes, long-term, I think we have, have seen a lot of, a lot of benefits from both podcasts that we have. Um, like you get to build your online network. Like we people on the fitness podcast to date is crazy. Right, like the people that like I feel like we could email. Thirty episodes. So say again. Two hundred and thirty episodes. Wow. Number of hours of audio. Which which is great, and and so, I think you're right that people often make a decision, but they don't really know why they're doing it. They just, I want to start a podcast. Like, that may well be a valid decision, but you have to know what are you trying to achieve with this and so for our purposes a podcast is a relationship building tool and it's a way to have a repository of content hours of content that someone who's new to your world can consume and get up to speed with 
who you are and build a relationship on a very scaled, in a very scaled way. Definitely. Reasons why you wouldn't want to set one up is you just may not be a very podcasty kind of person and you have to match the kind of content you create to your audience and to who you are and how well you come across or, or what you choose to come across best with, with your content. So Johnny and I are not Instagram people. Like we're just crap at it. We don't take photos. If we do, they're like from like up our noses and um, in the dark with bad angles and um, we yeah. And we're not very good at like ass selfies and that kind of thing. <laughs> There are many people we know that are fantastic at Instagram and they really play that game well. But you listen to them speak and you're like, whoa, mm. they're not like, so. So I think part of that and what you're saying there is like pick a, so as a theme, content of this sort, which I think is the same for Instagram, although slightly less so. And, you know, we can get into like search versus social. It's a big, big topic in and of itself but we both consume a lot of long form audio, like in the form of audio books, podcasts, like training that we'll be listening to or programs we're listening to. I think probably on a daily basis for me, it'll be like 30 minutes minimum, like on two times speed or whatever, or like I'm probably at least consuming that a day, even on days where I'm not really focusing on thinking about it. And it could be up to hours of audio just like blended into my like, driving walking whatever tri- like lighter sessions and, and that sort of stuff so i think for us it made a lot of sense to pick that platform because we know that that's what we consume so and our audience are people that tend to do that as well we yeah. our audience tend to be people who work full-time either um like commuting somewhere like that tends to be the most common reason that what, what's that face <laughs> i'll tell you in a second okay <laughs> I'm curious now. All right. Okay. Well, so what I was going to say was like, why should you start a podcast? Right. So like, why, why did we pick a podcast? Um, So we did a bit of an experiment at the start of the year. So if we go back to like 2019, we, for a long time uploaded weekly and for a period of time, almost daily fitness podcasts, right. With the view of we're going to grow the, the, the the listener base. Um, And I'm looking at, our stats from of the this is the fitness podcast right so i'm looking at the stats on a monthly basis um and one of the best things about a podcast and this is the same for anything on like any any search-based content right where like so youtube is the same articles and a website is the same different for social media so if you categorize those as like if i post something on social media it exists for let's say 24 hours and then it expires and it disappears if i create a podcast or a youtube video or an article and someone's interested in that topic they can find that again for the months and years right so the experiment we did was like okay if we stop now that we have 230 episodes if we stop posting on the fitness podcast for a while i wonder what would happen to the downloads and you imagine you didn't post on your instagram for months it would become ghost town so like this i mean like every month this year the fitness podcast had well over 2000 downloads in some instances, 4,000, 5,000 downloads with nothing new. Right. So what, what that tells you is people who are finding us somehow, like whatever that method is like paid free, whatever they come across our podcast and it serves as part of the, like the infrastructure that they consume of us before they buy something. It's part of the relationship building, but it's consistent. So it's this thing that we built. There's like all these hours of audio, that are still relevant to people even now. So Yusuf uploaded an episode yesterday. Yeah. All right. So that's had already like over 200 downloads, right? Which considering we've not really been serving the audience up to now. It was late last night actually. So. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So like you did a, you did an episode as well back in like April. So the, the, the track, the, the traffic on the podcast in terms of, or the, sorry, the, the number of podcasts we've launched on the fitness side has gone down. We've been focusing on this one for a period of time to see what happened to the fitness one. So we've done some episodes, but like still a thousand downloads an episode is kind of a minimum because there's this long standing equity that you build with this group of people that like are, are there ready to listen when you do post something. So I think it's important to distinguish between 
search driven and feed driven media. Yep. So part of the benefit that Johnny's described there of having podcast topics that are search engine friendly. And the reason that we use PowerPress is that we have a WordPress website. Our fitness website is a blog. Effectively, it's a blog feed. Um, and PowerPress integrates natively into that. So you can post an article that has a podcast embedded into it and is the same thing on the feed. That, that way it gets all of the search engine benefits that you would get from your main website also as the podcast. So that's why when we stopped posting for a while, d- downloads didn't really drop off too much because a lot of the a lot of it's coming from the search volume. Yeah. It's important that when you do that, that you have some calls to action. And I think the best call to action for search-driven content is subscribe because search-driven content is going to have new readers or new listeners or new watchers. And so they're not going to be used to your content and they may just dip in, watch the video and dip out unless you actually remind them that, hey, I've got loads of other content just like this that will help you to improve X, Y, and Z. Click the subscribe button and you'll find out more. And having one of those, it's also not, because if you try and pitch something, imagine you've got, we talk about the creepy uncle at the party or the barbecue. If someone listens to your content for the first time and they hear an episode, they may well like it. But then if you're pitching a paid thing to them straight away, it may be a bit early in the relationship and they might just be like, oh, I'm not interested and then bounce. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think like the key thing with all of this, I suppose, in terms of why did we start? So you might be thinking like, well, okay, you're now talking really positively about a podcast. Why did you start by saying don't start one? Is for, it's a great tool. So for our, for our business clients who are, further along in their journey where they have something that is like, okay, when I put this much money into advertising, I acquire this many customers, that many people join my email list, that many people become a recurring customer. Like you have that set up. It's like, okay, how do I squeeze more out of this system? Right? How do I get more results from what I'm doing? So I've got these people joining my email list who didn't buy from me in the first interaction, as you so said, right? Like, why is that? It was too soon for them, more than likely. So, all right, they probably have a trusted th- trust issue, like they don't know much about me. They maybe don't know much about what we do. What's one of the best things that we can do with that person to help build rapport? So for us, when someone like opts into our calculator and doesn't buy something, something like our podcast is a great way to be like, look, this is who we are. I get it. It was too soon. Like we, we rushed the relationship. I'm really sorry, please, you know, please still speak to me. Um, but here's 230 episodes of a podcast to listen to, to figure out whether or not we're right to work with, with you or not. So that's, that's an important feature then, isn't it? Which is you have to have an offer that converts before you start yeah. worrying about these things. And we've just taken the model and the lessons that we've learned from building the fitness podcast. And we've set up this business podcast as kind of a side project. And although it's, it's lower traffic, Last time mm. I checked, at least. Yeah, um, quite a bit, quite a bit. Sadly. Sadly. Just, but it, it enough. Like, why, just listen to all the episodes. It's not hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's not hard. Just do it. Just do it. Um, but it converts very, very well because we've taken what we've learned. We have an offer that already works. And actually, most of the people that buy from us, including, including you who's listening right now, <laughs> <laughs> may well already be aware of what we offer and what we do, but thinking, how do I know if I trust these guys? How do I know they're not another um, bunch of shysters um, that we see from the the six figure fit pro world? And that's why what we need to do is have a, have a nice long chat with you. And that's why I think it's also important to have both elements that yes, we need to gain your trust. We need to build credibility with you listening by giving some information and showing that we know how to achieve the results that you're looking for and how you can do that in your business. But also it's got to be something that you resonate with. And if you're listening to this and thinking these guys are a bunch of arrogant dickheads, don't like them, then fine. Like then it's not a fit made for each other. And so it's a relationship building process as well. And really when people are listening to podcasts or listening to on their commute or whatever, they don't want it to be a pure study. Like people want to have a bit of fun. They want to be entertained So it's important that your podcast is also 50% fun. And we do have episodes that are entirely fun and don't really have much, uh, much content. Um, But people love that. And actually we get some of the best feedback for those things too, because really people listening to a podcast, it is a substitute for having mates. 
yeah yeah definitely like i'm just looking over some of the episodes so like this month right like episodes we recorded back in 2017 are getting daily listens scary right yeah and and (laughs) that, that is the power of a podcast but like what i think is critical to understand is we don't run the business from the podcast and i think that's what so so many people think the reason i haven't got more clients is because i don't have a podcast like if you're relying on anything like that if you're relying on any free content to be the source of that's how i get clients either you are a huge influencer and you have a big enough audience to be able to do that in which case you probably aren't listening anyway or you're going to have this very jagged up and down very sporadic like post and hope type situation like you said just posted a, a fitness podcast last night if we were in the situation of like fuck like if that doesn't get a client like that's it we're gonna have to go back to nine to five life it'd be oh, it'd be horrendous high pressure and then you wouldn't have fun doing the podcast as you said like this mm-hmm. is kind of a adjunct to what we're doing and it's not like the podcast doesn't get us clients it's it's a relationship building process for people who are already in the pipeline mm-hmm. and i think that's what's important to know like you may well strike lucky and if you set up a podcast and you're just incredibly electric and entertaining and people love it and you're able to promote it hard, then it could even be something that you promote on the front end. But the majority of listeners, especially for this podcast, are people who are already aware of us in some way, probably on the email list. And it's just a way to deepen that relationship. So that's it. Like I, the way I think over time we've, we've, become we're just in a situation where i think we we view it in this way of like okay paid ads are a very on any platform you pick right they're a very reliable way to just get people in to your world it's like get people knocking on the front door and like come in come in like where do you want to go do you want to go like you can buy this thing here now if you want all right oh, okay no no yes sorry no, no no problem all right you can go that way but everyone's on the email list right so everyone whether they buy or not they're on the email list then and so you have a communication platform to say like okay i want to send these people an email to let them know about this new YouTube video that you have just done or this new podcast we've just recorded because all those people are fence sitters, right? They're all people who were presented with something and didn't buy it, which is fair enough. That's most people, but it's like, well, the onus is then on you to present to them why they should buy from you. And that's when things like a podcast or a YouTube channel or articles or anything like that work really well. But if, if the goal is I'm going to build my podcast so that I get my get leads coming into my email list, Yes, it might work, but it's going to take a couple of years, realistically. It's kind of the problem with the fact that podcast, because it's fragmented and it's on different different platforms, that yes, it's search driven, but it's not a social platform. People don't mm. share it. And yeah. so you actually run into problems where if it's your sole source of media, you're going you're gonna to run into problems. Like it's why if Joe Rogan just had audio podcast on iTunes, yes, it would, it would do well, especially if you got into the iTunes charts, but think of the amount of potential that he's gained from having, you know, these clips, Joe Rogan, or uh, is it JRE clips where it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Harris's thoughts on COVID-19 or mm-hmm. um, Jordan Peterson um, discusses transsexual, uh, you know, what, what, whatever it is. And it's like five minute clips with very punchy headlines that people are like, Oh, I want to know what, what this is about. Mm. So having a podcast, we talked about these two kind of aspects of it, which is the search driven and the relationship building search driven is on the front end relationship building is on the back end and i think that if you're going to have a podcast fine it's easy content to create especially if you're doing it as a two-way chat like this but you want to have it on a different medium as well whether that is simply putting the video of your podcast on youtube like we do or having a different form of content and that is up to you as to what you're best at producing and where your strengths are. So if you're quite a visual person, you're arty, you're good with design, you're good with photography, you have quite a nice, like visually appealing life or body, then Instagram is the way to go. If you are good at face to camera type stuff and you're happy putting yourself up on video, YouTube. If you're a better, if you're better at kind of more introverted and better at like formulating your opinions and doing it in, in written form, Twitter and blog for short form and long form. And I, I actually, I see Twitter and blogging actually as kind of the same thing. They're just a continuation of, the blogging is just a continuation of Twitter. Um, Twitter's good at kind of quickly practicing your writing and then blogging is taking those ideas and fleshing them out. 
you know when we started the fitness podcast? Do you know the, the year? Off the top of your head. This is just per iTunes. 2010. No, 2012. 2013. Was it? Very <laughs> close. Because the other thing I was going to talk about was, I think why we started it. Because it's, it's always like, you know, people, people say these things retrospectively of like, of like, you know, this is, this is the strategy you should have before you start a pocket. Like we didn't have that strategy when we started it. Um, I think we started it because, so I think it looks like you've, uh, you've trimmed the episodes a bit, like the really bad ones aren't there anymore. Possibly it, I think also with our host, it doesn't show the, the oldest 50 or something. Good. Just because of the number of episodes. Well, so like Propin Fitness Podcast, episode one, uh, which was a Q&A about fasting, backloading, and why you shouldn't bulk and cut. And that was in January 2013. But then the second episode was an interview. Do you know who it was with? John Kiefer. No. So those are, those are even older, those episodes. But that's why I think, that's why we started it. Because we had, yeah, so it's Eric. So we had, we, I think we, I remember we like car backloading was all the buzz and we were like, imagine if we could speak to John Kiefer, let's invite him on the podcast. And we got him on the podcast. Then I went on his podcast. Do you remember that? That was horrendous. Nerve wracking. <laughs> but then we had like Eric Helms, Lane Norton. Um, who else? Spencer Nadolsky, Julian Smith, Alberto Nunez. They were all really good ones. Oh, so we do have Kiefer. Twice. Kiefer was, Kiefer was 2014. Must be reposted. I think we had him either reposted or had him twice. Tom Feeney. So, like, this is a side of the Emmett Louis. <laughs> Shaco, like a Polaroid picture. <laughs> uh, Dean Somerset. Like, this is the side of, of podcasting that I think is, a, is an extra benefit, right? Is that you can, you think, well, who else might my audience want to listen to? Who else could I introduce myself to? I'll go on their podcast. They can come on mine. You end up building contacts in the, in the industry. So like we feel now, like we, we just had Menno, for example, on this podcast, we've got another couple of guests lined up who've been on our fitness podcast because we built a bit of a rapport with them because we, we just interviewed them, right? And you chat with them for an hour and you build a relationship with people in your industry. Just and vice extra. versa. Like we're, yeah. we're, fe- we're due to be featured on a few other podcasts in the next couple of weeks as well. Yeah. Because of, because of it's, and it's the, like the loose ties of like someone hears about you through someone else's podcast and then finds you and consumes yours. So, but all of this comes down to, as you so said, like you have to have something that is, do I have a mechanism whereby if that person hears about me, there's a link they can go to or something they can do that is likely I know based on testing, lead them to, to buy from me. Cause if you don't have that, it's just a ton of traffic for the sake of it. Right. It's just a ton of people listening to you, but you're not, you can't run a business like that there still needs to be some kind of transaction happen. Very Sorry. much. So um, to answer the question of, okay, based on what you've said, podcasting is for me. I like the spoken word. I think it's easiest for me to create content that way. I've got a good microphone. Like that's, that's actually really, really important that you don't do your podcast like our first ones, which were just terrible audio. Yeah, and bad if audio is bad, like people can actually tolerate bad video quality, but they can't tolerate bad audio quality. So mm. people will, again, they'll bounce off that. They'll listen to it for 10 seconds. They'll be like, oh, I can't manage this. So making sure that your setup is good. But then beyond that, in terms of setting up your hosting and your, your audio, um, your audio post-production editing and having an intro and audio stabs and um, like a, a bit at the end, that's like, the promo bit and all of that stuff and then titling and thumbnails and description. We just have a guy who handles all of that. If you're interested, he is fantastic. He does all of the audio for our podcasts. And if you just send us a message, we can put you in touch with him. Um, yeah. But it's, I think it's important that with something like this, it, because it's so, there's many moving parts. It's better to just give it to an expert and he's reasonably priced and he's very, he's very pro. So um, yeah, have he's someone we went to school with. He is actually. Yeah, he um, yeah. So he does all of the all of this podcast is like we send him the files. He takes care of the, like does all the the tweaking and all of the the jiggery pokery that, like I say, like if only you could do understand the internet better, maybe we'd be better at these things. But like, I think it's just about 
the, the challenge is I have an amount of time and an amount of money to devote to building my online fitness business. What should I do first? What should I prioritize? If you're listening to this thinking, right, I have, I can tell you like how many leads I've got over the last month, how many clients I've got over the last month. I can tell you my, like what my recurring revenue figure is. And I've got this email list. I'm kind of emailing them. I want to get a bit more out of the model. Podcasts are a great addition. Like it's, if anything, it's the perfect thing to do in my opinion. Um, but if you don't have any of that and you're thinking, oh, well, I'm going to start Googling different ways to host a podcast. It's easy to do that because you can control launching a podcast, every aspect of it, pretty much like you can control the cover art, the intro, the sound quality. You can go down this rabbit hole of getting the best microphone, picking the best platforms, interviewing all the guests. And you can say in a year's time, I have started this podcast, but the parts that are like anxiety inducing, which is well, like at some point I'm going to have to ask someone for money or at some point I'm going to have to like put an offer out there or up my prices or build a sales funnel or whatever. That's the stuff that you can't necessarily influence the outcome of, but is the stuff that actually moves the needle. So just don't use it as an excuse in a year's time to still not be in the position where you don't have any leads, don't have any clients. Because having a podcast without clients is still not a business, basically. Yeah, so, so step one, have a sales process mm. and have a product that matches your niche and works and solves a problem for the people that you're trying to serve. Just go to propanefitness.com forward slash business podcast. Really, that's the answer. There should it is. That start. Like instead of listening to this episode, people should have just done that at the beginning. <laughs> It'd be much easier. Like we should just, each of these episodes should just be, hi, thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate you, like the, the effort. But let's just, rather than us do this, go listen to the recording at propanefitness.com forward slash. Let's skip all the hoo ha and just go to propanefitness.com forward slash business podcast exactly that's it that is it. Is to it so if you have any questions for us to address next week do let us know just send us a message on any of the platforms that you do follow us on and we will get back to you it says strong on it it's very nice i i think it won't have shown your face there because I was the last person to speak and I think Zoom will have just held the camera on well, It's still recording, isn't it? It is still recording. La, 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 <laughs> la, 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 There you go. That, that's what you have to do. All right. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs>